Many thanks for your company here on Joy News today. That will be it for this edition. Before I go, a recap of our headlines. Majority in Parliament have warned of punitive measures from the International Monetary Fund against government over alleged missing 7 million Ghana CDs from the state coffers. Meanwhile, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has affirmed government's commitment to tackling corruption through the passage of the Right to Information Bill and others. And we brought to you some rural news on how simple hand washing techniques being employed by rural folks in Ghana is helping reduce cases of diarrhea and pneumonia by half the current infection rate. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. You can also follow us on social media on Facebook and Twitter. We are at Joy News on TV. My name is Fernis Abubed. Once again, many thanks for your company. That'll be it for this edition of Joy News today. But we'll cross over live to Parliament now, where the Appointments Committee is vetting Minister Designate for Transport, Kweku uh, Isiama. Mr. Chairman, my last question. You know the police is supposed to help ensure that we have the right driver's license. Our, our vehicles are roadworthy. Uh, insurance uh, are obtained as by law. Would you consider a percentage of all these fees going to the police to help them strengthen their unit, their house in the maintenance of ensuring that we have driver's licenses, we have insurance, we, the, our vehicles are roadworthy. Honorable German, I will plead with the honorable member to repeat his question again. Oh, I'm saying that you, you know the driver's licenses, when you're going to procure driver's license, you have to pay a fee. If your vehicle is going to be checked for its road not, uh, roadworthiness, you pay a fee. If you have to procure uh, an insurance, you also pay for it. Will you consider a percentage of all that is going, whether it's driver license, whether it's roadworthiness, whether it's insurance, even though I know the insurance really doesn't sit with any, uh, uh, any of the agencies under uh, transport. Will you consider making a point to ensure that at least the police have a percentage. Even if let's say it's one city for uh, driver's license, when you pay for it, goes to the police. When you are getting your vehicle, world witness, some amount of money in all those payments, goes to the police to strengthen the police unit, like the MTTU, to be able to help enforce this law. Because you have talked about the candidate in an earlier question and things that needs to be done to ensure that we, we reduce the candidate on our rules. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, I, by God, I'm able to con be confirmed as a minister. I will sit down and discuss this issue. I'll give it a thought, call all the parties involved and see how we can discuss. And the police are doing well, we need to support them. But the first of all, we must get the consensus of all these parties involved and we will, I will bring them together if it is agreed that we need support why not we will support them for them to give us a good service thank you thank you mr chair chairman thank you and uh, and joining you to congratulate kweku ofori esiama Minister designate for transport and to note from him whether uh, the transition team you took briefings comprehensively for the transport sector including rails and aviation or not. Thank you very much Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman I thought that Honorable Minority Leader after the Shabobo team has finished his questions. <laughs> But, <laughs> but I will, Honorable Chairman, I had some briefings concerning the Ministry of Transport. That is what I can say for now. Did it cover aviation and railways? 
because I want to be guided. I don't want to ask you a question which is not fair. Was your briefing comprehensive that you respond to issues affecting transport generally, or we should just narrow you to what may be under you today? Honorable Chairman, the briefing I had relates only strictly to Minister of Transport, as the name connotes now, transport. No aviation, no race. Uh, but we note that President Nana Dudankwa have decided to annihilate your ministry. Uh, you have Ministry for Aviation stand alone, Ministry of Railway stand alone. Uh, we believe that is duplication. We believe that it will engender rural conflict. But I want to be fair to you. Are you aware of the cons ongoing projects of construction of airports as part of your briefing, particularly in who and some work in Wa and some work going on in Tamale and some work in Kumasi? Was that part of your briefing? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Chairman, I've heard it, but I don't have any information. Like I told the Honorable Member, it, what, they, what was given to me strictly about Ministry of Transport, nothing on aviation, Nothing on race, but I've heard some information that this, but I don't have any information to give it to you now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me now take you to Metro Mass Transport, and in particular, the Ghanaian worker. I'm sure you are familiar that in America and elsewhere, they have what they call rush hours. There are very easy things we can do which can help the working people of this country. And is that, you know between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. is when every worker wants an opportunity to get to work. And when it is 4 p.m., 4.30, workers want an opportunity to go home. Will you deploy metro mass transport to many of the government working areas in order to facilitate the easy movement of workers from their homes back home, recognizing the rush hour uh, principle. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, any policy that you put in place to just to help the worker to have the best service, you do it. If it is that we need to put in a good fleet of buses to make sure that the workers have, get this available transit, why not? You put in place for them. Once they get a good service and they're happy with it, you put in place for them to, for them to enjoy it. So it's something that you, you will consider. Chairman, Chairman, he is alone in the witness box. Will you do that for workers? Can we be assured that once you become minister, around 4, 4.30 p.m., uh, even though truck truck drivers may not be happy with you, if you deploy more of those buses, it can get many people home. I mean, as I walk home every day, I'm not talking of this moment, in the last 18 or two decades of my life, I get worried about it. They get home late. It affects productivity because getting back to work. Will you do that? Honorable Chairman, I will consider it. You will, given the separation of aviation and railway from your oversight uh, portfolio, it appears to me that you largely will be responsible to one major institution. The others will be ancillary, Ghana Post and Harbors Authority. Importers, in particular, exporters, are concerned about the time and transaction cost, time and clearance of goods and services. He brings in something from New York or London or from uh, wherever in Paris, and it takes two days, sometimes three days. What will you do to reduce the time and transaction costs at, at the port in terms of clearance of uh, goods at the port? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, one thing that we can do to reduce
time of doing business and costs, like I said, is segregation of container handling from other activities of the port. Secondly, like I said, we will introduce technology into the system. One does not need to bring a container down for her to pick item by item to determine what is in it. Once the person, the items are declared on the form, we may have a system that will, if we put that, like this kind of, they put it on it, it determines it, that the content are correct. So technology is key. We will bring in the appropriate technology to make sure that time and cost is reduced. Thank you. Chairman, is the nominee aware that the Atuabu Port Project was part of a discussion between then President Mahama and the Prime Minister uh, of uh, the United Kingdom, which was supposed to provide a dedicated oil services uh, terminal in Atuabu, which was to create employment of about 3,000 persons and then also provide a second opportunity of a port. Will you support the commencement of work on this uh, project? Mr. Chairman, Honorable Chairman, thank you very much. Honorable Chairman, I have said it here, and I want to assure the Honorable Minister that MPP believes in the private participation. And we will encourage every private man who come to this country to do legitimate business. Like I have said, that Atuabu, development of Atuabu should not be detrimental of that of GPHA. I will try and harmonize the two and make sure that, by any legal consequences, Atuabu will go on, GPHA will go on, and this country will develop. Uh, what, Honorable Nominee Chairman, with your permission, what will you do to reduce the time that importers and exporters spend to get their goods out and to get it in? Chairman, he has, he has answered this question. In another form, at least uh, I've had to desegregate containers, introduce technology so that you don't dismember the containers. Uh, I, don't, I think that should be sufficient. I'm aware that you have the West Blue initiative supported by GCNET in terms of improving trade facilitation at the port. And the difficulty is that from three days to two days, I want an indication from you that you reduce three days to two days in terms of clearance of goods at the port, taking charge of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Honorable Chairman, GPAJ operates with other, other agencies at the harbor. What we need to do is to do a collaboration. If, if the three days is creating a problem for us, we can sit on a round table, have a discussion, and see how best we can solve the problem. So my basic problem is that there should be a better collaboration between GPHA and other operators at the port. Thank you. And then for the record, Chairman, in one of your answers, you referred to a conflict between GPHA and the gas, pro, uh, at 12, uh, the, the, the gas uh, project. Let me indicate that I was part of a cabinet subcommittee which worked on it. We invited then Director General of GPHA, uh, Amamu, if I get the name right, Anamu, Anamu to be part of it. So there was broad-based consultation together is the theft rivalry. Everything must be at Tema Port. Do you share the view, or if there's opportunity tomorrow to look at other ports you would look at? You well, consider it? Honorable Chairman, I can assure the Honorable Member that I will call for study of our yeah, travel. One minute. And I'm sure, like I've told you, I have no hindrance the for the development of Atuabu. I have no problem at all. Honorable Chairman, I will call for the document, have a look at it, like I said. If it is that you can harmonize GPHA and Atwabo, you will do that. You will do that. Thank you. And uh, Chairman, uh, STC, another experience. We know that part of their problem is uh, recapitalization, to be able to give them some assurances of money. My little experience with Greyhound bus services elsewhere, 
you have STC even as they have limited uh, buses. A situation where I'm traveling to Berkwai via Nkoko through Kumasi through Kintampo to Tamale, and STC wants to have a dedicated bus to each place. When through innovation, they could take all the passengers heading towards uh, Kintampo. Then you have another bus waiting at Nkoko, which picks them. I'm sure many of our colleagues have the Greyhound bus experience. Would you work to uh, change the way we do things with STC uh, uh, in Ghana? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, this is an, uh, an advice from the minority leader, which I'll consider very much if I'm, if I'm confirmed. I will call the management of STC sit down with them, look at it, and put a, this advice, the honorable member is advising, he is giving a very good advice. So we take it on board and work the, and see the workings of STC vis-a-vis one bar dedicated to a town in relation to, like you rightly said, picking people, dropping them in Kumasi and Takwadi. If there is any management uh, changes that we can do to help us develop this idea, we will do it. Chairman, Bupe provides, Bupe in the northern region provides an opportunity for the development of a port. You know you have Savannah's men there. Indeed, my view is to get Bupe declared as an industrial uh, zone for northern region because of its access to uh, the major water facility. Will you consider the development of the Bupe port. Honorable Chairman, I think in our manifesto we've stated clearly that we will bring a business activity to Bupe by building an inland port at Bupe. And it's something that we are committed to it, and we will do that. Uh, Chairman, my final question is to wish the nominee well. And, and remind him that today now he understands what it means and how to finance higher education. When he was in UCC, then as president of National Union of Ghana Students, they pelted stones and water at me when, when, when I advocated strongly at the time that government alone could not finance higher education and therefore there was a need to liberalize the sector, which brought in private universities in Ghana. He was dancing with the name Shabobo and throwing water at me on that Shabobo. I hope that uh, he will come to Parliament for us to ratify all outstanding treaties that Ghana is signatory to, to ensure compliance, which has to do with all ports and airport. I thank you, Chairman, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, well, I have no question for you. I only suggest that there's a lot of people around willing to support you. I see Kofi Braku here, who has a lot of experience in the port. I see behind you Orship, who has a lot of experience in the port. And Kabra uh, sitting there. There's a lot of experience in the transport sector altogether. Use the opportunity, and I'm sure you succeed. I wish you well. Uh, are there any people who want to, yes, please acknowledge them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Acknowledgement. Mrs. Mina Asamwa, spouse of the nominee, is here. Ma, Asiyama, Asiyama, Asiyama. Mina Asiyama, sorry. Nana Kokoko. I don't think any of dominancy. Mrs. Jura, I see my mother of the nominee. Nana Amaputi, Queen Mother, dominancy. Dinchra, traditional council led by Odiamono Intri Chum, Berima II. Nana Kundria, I'm here of Edina, traditional council. Mr. Robert Kutin, Jr., the regional chairman of the MPP in the central region. Yeah. Mr. Daniel Apianin, Apianin Upper Dinshaw West constituency chairman. 
Nana Mensa Upper Dinchra East constituency chairman of the MPP, Mr. Selby, trans the chief director of the Ministry of Transport, Mr. Kendis, Western Regional MPP chairman, Mr. Frank Davis, a legal practitioner, Mr. Echo Mill, also a legal practitioner, Honorable Benjamin Kofi Aye, former MP for Upper Denchira West. Very Reverend Dr. Mick Edu, Mispa Methodist Church. Mr. George O'Drew in Tiamwa, Gilligold Pharmaceuticals. The following agencies are also adequately represented. Ghana Port and Harbor Authority, Ghana Maritime Authority, Ghana Shippers Authority, Regional Maritime University, DVLA, Metro Mass Transport, Intercity STC, Ghana Technical Training Center, Volta Lake Transport Company, and National Road, and Road Safety Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Oh, Chairman. Uh, I'm told the former member of this house, uh, Mr. Niamadonko, is also here. He, if you bypass you, he was not a member. Oh, okay, but he was minister for health, if I recall, and he came to Shanti Beijing. But I go way back with him when he was a CDI chairman. Uh, so. <laughs> Honorable Chairman, Honorable Chairman, let me use this opportunity to thank Almighty God for today, thank the, the President for the trust he has reposed in me, and most importantly, thank this Honorable House for the, also bringing me here to speak before you and trying and see if you can give me this opportunity. Bear in mind that Haruna did not educate us where when this fee pay issue was coming. But now that he's giving me a lot of verdict, I'm sure I will join him. We'll go back there and go and drink. Thank you very much. All right, you're discharged. You'll hear from us later. Uh, no clapping. It's 21 minutes after one. You're still watching Joy News here on Multi TV, DSTV, and Go TV. Uh, the vetting process for Minister Designate for Transport, Kweko Fourier Siama, just ended. And uh, next to appear before the committee, uh, Minister Designate for Railways Development, Joe Gatte, and Minister Designate for Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation, Professor Frimpong Boating. Stay here. On